All right, this is a tutorial on how to create uh, nice renders in Cinema 4D for backgrounds or whatever you want to make, recruitment challenges, logos, or anything. I'm going to be using uh, two different plugins. I can't really link you because a lot of them I can't really tell you. You might not know how to install um, plugins into Cinema 4D, so you'll have to look these up. It's going to be Griebler and Reaper X I'm going to use for this. All right, let's get started. First off, what you want to do is you want to go to your render settings, make sure that you have your output, click on output, width 1280, height 720, save, and then you want it to be a PNG, and then 16-bit channel for best quality, and then you want to make sure you have alpha channel, this is extremely important. Now what else you want to get? Ambient occlusion. Change the minimum ray length to 5 and then the maximum ray length to 150. What this does is it creates more realistic shading on your um, text or your logo or whatever you're working with. Next what you want is global illumination. This creates a more accurate and more realistic image through your Lightroom. It doesn't just like brighten it, it makes the shading nice, it makes, it's really nice, you'll see when I render it. You want to add depth of field, just that small, it's, it's, it's a small thing but it makes it nice. You want lens effects and then you want object glow, those are pretty self-explanatory. Close this. Alright, so here I have my text. What I'm going to do before I start is I'm going to get a good angle of how I want to render it. So I know that I want to, when I render it, I want to be right here. What you want to do is just click your camera and then just leave it. What you'll see is this green box which is what your camera sees so you can work on it from behind you can work on it from the top from the bottom left right center everywhere you want but if ever you get lost and you just want to go back see it's really hard to get the perfect view from the camera you'll never get it right on but if you like it you just click on this camera button and it goes right back alright let's get started first you want to make sure that you stay organized by naming all your different layers so original text Okay, so this is going to be the original text. What you want to do is duplicate it. This is, I'm just going to show you a nice way to render some nice effects to add. You want to go to Atom Array, drag your original text.1, rename this to Outline. What this does is it creates an outline and at every corner or every subdivision, there's going to be a ball and then there's a line now to make this look cool you just want to change it to two and then it just looks like one clean outline and something else I forgot to say at the start go to your original text um, I'm only selecting both of them because I forgot to do it with the original text go to fillet cap and fillet cap and then change it down to two alright all right, so that does look good. That looks pretty good. Perfect. Now you have that. So you want to copy. I'm going to copy my original text again. I'm going to use a plugin called Griebler, and then I'm going to drag this into it. I'm going to go to stock Griebles, and I'm not going to generate Griebles because I don't want to do that with this with this piece of whatever this is going to be. And then click object or base change the height you don't want too much height change the uh, percentages on the height and such and then maybe if you want more greebles like along the back along the top what you can do is go to your object and then change the subdivision so see how this creates lots of texture right around here Oh, and something else I forgot to uh, mention, that this is one effect. If you want your text to almost like, m almost look like it's, they're all in different position, you just want to go to here, uncheck position in your random effector, which is through MoGraph, and then set rotation, and then set rotation to whatever you think looks good. I think this looks all right. Now what you want to do is move your Griebler, your Griebler back so it does not interfere with the original text layer. 
you can see through the top you just want to move it right just so it's right behind your outline layer all right perfect we got that now I'm gonna create another copy of my original text I'm gonna hit C which is gonna turn it all into splines which have been put in extrude nerves so I just wanna take these and drag these out get rid of this original text right here go to plugins Reaper X and then you have three letters so then you want three Reapers and then you just drag them all in now this Reaper X um, plugin I haven't quite mastered yet but you'll find out that if you are working with like an O it's only gonna go along the inside outline I don't know how to get it to work along the outside outline if there's like a hole in the middle of your text but we're not gonna worry about it it's gonna look decent in the final render anyway so select all the layers and then fix it to whatever you think looks good so let's just go 25 change the radius you want to make it thinner you want to make it thicker do whatever you want I'm just gonna make it look like this so it looks like there's like things popping out of it and it looks pretty clean all right now I what you want you want good nice custom made textures you don't want to just make your own colors by double clicking and then changing it to red and then just dropping it on because that'll that'll just look this just disgusting don't even talk to me if you do that now I'm just gonna apply this blue glow thing and glows usually work for the smaller things so I'm gonna select all my almost wiry looking layers select them all and then apply the blue then I'm gonna select my Griebler layer apply this metal texture to it and then I'm gonna use my scratches and apply it to the original text and what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna change this to frontal so we actually see the texture which will make it look nice and then click on the side if you want to give your text a little bit of texture or whatever click on random drag it inside of the text go to deformer or, and then go to deformation point and then you'll see it just goes absolutely ham status you can tone it down a bit tone it to whatever you like I'm gonna tone it down to let's go here and I'm gonna make the text I'm gonna go to the caps change it to quadrangles and make it a regular grid which is just gonna make it you know a little rough a little bumpy it's gonna look like an actual texture it's gonna be pretty nice and then you wanna set up your lights so how I usually set them up is I'll make myself like a small soft box just to light it all up and give it some reflection so you just wanna drag this under your text make sure it's not too big and then you just wanna give it a little bit of a slant just a little bit and then just bring it up up here make sure that you click on it go to compositing cinema 4d tags compositing scene by camera and then turn that off and then you just want to make yourself a simple texture completely white no specular and luminance drag it and then put it on your softbox now that you have that created you can hide it by clicking the top the top of the uh, the top two things right here I don't know what they're called I just know that if you double click the bottom you get a red dot on the bottom which means it doesn't show in the render but if you click it on top it shows in the render like it'll have its effects but it doesn't show in your workspace but I already composited uh, give it a composition tag so we should be set for that now I just want to set up a couple lights to get some nice lighting going on so just drag this up a bit see you don't want it to be super bright you just want it to be a little bright because the softbox is already working on lighting up the rest of it and now all we gotta do is just uh, hit render oh and one more thing if you wanna have a specific safe path I have this is my scraps folder this is just where I you know keep all my random stuff that I render and stuff don't mind the YOLO bowl cunt <laughs> let's see C for D 
render tutorial. Perfect. Close that and then render it. Those are just all other tries that I failed because I forgot an important part. It's going to take a long time to render. If it's taking a long time to render, don't mind it. I used to make backgrounds and stuff on my laptop, which is like Windows XP 1850. It was the slowest thing ever. It took me literally an hour to render on these render settings and such. So I wouldn't recommend... I would definitely recommend getting a good computer, maybe buying yourself a new processor to uh, render better. Alright, nice. Now it's starting to render. What the, uh, like, almost black with gray dots, it's just rendering out the textures and the lighting from the global illumination to make it look nice. And that's what the softbox does. Make sure you don't forget the softbox. All right, that looks pretty nice. It's got a little bit of glow to it. It's got, it's got these things flying everywhere. It's got a nice grungy texture. That's pretty nice. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring this into Photoshop. I've got my color correction pack here. I'm just gonna go open it and then find my scraps. So it's gonna be under C, C4D render tutorial. Perfect. Open it up. And then you just want to go ahead and drag it right in. Alright, perfect. You got it. Now, what you want to do is you can add CC and stuff. Now, this looks pretty cool, but what I like to do is hit Control or Command J, depending on what operating system you use. Duplicate the layer. Go to Filter Gallery. And then use Glowing Edges. Now, you want just a little bit of, not too much, just a little bit of edge width and the brightness but you don't want too much smoothness or you want just just in the middle because then that'll really bring out the edges and make it look nice so this looks pretty disgusting right now but as soon as you screen it it almost overlays your text but this is why the color correction is important I'm gonna use this is one of my favorite CC's now it almost looks like it's rock and it's glowing and you could just turn down the opacity if it's too light for you or something See, it looks almost like a scaly, rocky, mountainy with glowing things. That's if you want to make like a metally texture. But there's like all sorts of color corrections you can use. And I, I like this color correction because it gets the shading and stuff nice. But if you want to change a color, just create a brand new layer. Whatever color you want. Let's say we want to make this blue or something. So just completely murk it. Just make it completely blue change the blending layers options to hue and then it'll copy it'll mimic whatever color you put on all right and then a nice thing that i like to do this is you create one more new layer go to your paintbrush and then i don't know where i got these and i don't know how to put them into like packets so you guys can use it but you just want to grab like custom paintbrushes or whatever and then just add some splats or whatever in the background makes it look nice and gives it you know some some spunk spunk I don't know what spunk is but it gives it spunk oh. you just don't want to overdo it you know and then you just put it into your whatever you want throw in some textures you could change whatever you want make it look nicer make it look darker you can make it look brighter do whatever you want with it but that's how you make detailed textures I don't really like this texture I don't use textures like this I usually go with one texture and then what I would do is I would overlay it with like in Photoshop but this is just a basic tutorial on how to make detailed renders and really nice effects and stuff so uh, 
Thank you for watching. Subscribe and stay tuned for more.